Welcome to chapter one. Welcome to the basic overview of e-marketing. The thing about this chapter is that it is a summary of the state of play as it used to be. So you'll have to update to do some reading around and picking up on some of the things that have changed. But for the most part, what we're really interested in in an overview of e-marketing is what does the internet do for us as e-marketers? What does it give us in terms of some of the basic technical things we should understand, some of the history, some of the philosophy, some of the background? Why should we be actually looking at this? Because it's very easy to come into a platform like the internet or look at, say, mobile phones or look at Facebook or Twitter or even just the web itself and go, everything else doesn't matter now, everything's new, let's throw all the pre-existing ideas out without really considering is that the best way we can do things. So this is about the technological background. It's also going to set up some of the frameworks and a couple of the ideas that will recur throughout the text because the idea of a product offering that makes the best use of the functions of the internet, the better your product suits the distribution environment that is the internet, the easier it's going to be dis to distribute. So it's going to be one of those product design decisions that knowing your background, knowing a little bit of your history will make your future a lot easier. So one of the things that we really want to open with is there is a bit of debate still. It's 2016, the internet is 20 years old. There's still a debate over marketing versus e-marketing. Now that debate is becoming less relevant as the boundaries between what is online and offline are getting very blurred. Uh, the fact that you can order something from your mobile phone in a restaurant. So you can order off a menu in a restaurant and have the food delivered to you, to your table, having paid for the entire transaction on your phone. All these elements means that what is online and offline in that context? The flip side to this is that when you go to a store, you are mostly online mostly dealing with the offline. When you go to Amazon, you're mostly dealing with the online. So the debate is there. There are some distinctions that are still worth having, but what you're looking at here is being able to think through. You don't have to decide, but one of the things that matters is this classic model from the 90s, the Hoffman and Novak hypermediated communication, really looks at this from the point of view of, can the customer reach the company? Can the company reach the customer? Can the customer reach other customers? And can other companies reach your customer? So you want to be thinking about this in terms of who contacts who, who can talk to who. In terms of opening a couple of definitions early on, e-commerce is not the same as e-marketing. We are marketing. We are going to do whole things about consumer behavior, about value creation, needs, wants, but there's a whole infrastructure of e-commerce, accounting, finance, logistics, engineering, stuff that we as marketers aren't going to go into as detail, but we'll just assume will work and will be there. When we go and talk about the e-marketing of bank services, and we start talking about e-marketing and banks, we don't actually really care as e-marketers about what underpins the ATM network. We just assume that the ATM network will work and it will do its thing. So e-commerce looks after some of those aspects we don't have to worry about. Now, the internet component parts view. I've been a big fan of ensuring that anyone who studies e-marketing has at least considered the idea of what the internet looks like under the hood. You don't need to be able to code to do e-marketing, but it helps if you understand some of the philosophy, some of the frameworks, and some of the assumptions. The better you come to terms with some of the assumptions, the easier it is to basically operate on a platform that's still developing. It is changing. Some of the old ways are going away, but still valuable. So, four parts of the internet you really want to worry about. 
There's infrastructure, exchange, interaction and environments. Infrastructure is the hardware. For an Australian, the infrastructure is not yet, and probably never will be, the national broadband network. But when you can't get a YouTube video to load because of buffering, streaming, network congestion, and your client can't get it to load, and your advertising can't load, the infrastructure is failing and the infrastructure is failing you. So you care about infrastructure because you want, if you're offering a service that depends on high-speed internet access, you want high-speed internet access. So you've got a reason to care about infrastructure. Exchange, this is the software, this is the stuff that makes the internet tick. The alphabet soup isn't something you need to be able to tell me what each thing stands for. What you want to be knowing and thinking about is, these are technologies, this is an element of the infrastructure. What's in my favour? What's useful for me? And what do I need to know to the extent of I can make considerations for my product around this? Top of your list, FTP, File Transfer Protocol versus Torrent. These are two very important ideas of a one point, go somewhere, bring a file down to you versus a multi-point file shared amongst many. Each of these things comes with, again, philosophies, frameworks, stuff that if you want to get into, you can, but you're not necessarily required to go into depth, but some surface knowledge helps. Interaction. This is one of the big parts, is that the internet is basically not a network of computers as far as we are concerned. Infrastructure and exchange is computer to computer. It's networks of devices, machines, stuff. We care about the interaction, interaction level. We care about human to human. So we are interested in things like shared goods of value. We're interested in concepts of the virtual presence, the telepresence, the sense of I am on the internet as a physical place. I am part of a place. I am a member of a group or I am a a participant somewhere, so we're looking at the human side. This also ticks into our environment because basically when we started talking about the internet back in the day, we came up with metaphors, and those metaphors were basically all physical. So we tried to translate physicality into the software network. Varying degree of success. But this also explains some of the language of understanding what it is we're doing, and also some of the language you just don't want to be using now because it's been 20 years since the 90s. In fact, it's been 20 years since the 90s were really over. So, figure 1.1. An important point for you to be thinking is that this is not a checklist. This is a way of thinking. So when you're designing a product, you're thinking to yourself, what do I want to do with the internet to for my product, for my marketing, for my own personal activity, which of these elements is going to give me the best access to the market I want and the best capacity to deliver? So you, do I need to be thinking network of networks because I want to go into business to business marketing? Do I need to be thinking how do I construct virtual geography because I want to gather client user, clients and users in the one place? Do I want to be thinking virtual economy because I'm all about the transactions, the business to business, the facilitation. And do I want to be thinking about virtual presence? I'm about the individual feeling connected. Where are you going with what you want to do? And that's going to be one of those ones that you want to be thinking about as a pretty much a philosophical. It doesn't have to guide directly strategic and tactical decisions. It just helps. All right, a couple of technical things I want to raise briefly. One is, and you're going to get this mentioned a few times, the network neutrality. As a marketer, the most important thing that you want to be fighting for is the capacity to access the network on equal footing. We've already lost that fight in the retail shop fronts. We've already lost that fight where you have to pay placement fees to be on a certain location on a shelf. 
So we want to avoid that happening with the internet because that kills innovation. And newsflash, most of you aren't going to be working for the big enough companies who've got the capacity to stifle innovation. You'll be the ones trying not to be stifled. So it's in your best interest and it's in your best of interest. Another aspect that should be noted is that the internet was and is a system designed to route round blockage and regards blocks as damage. How this has translated in practice is if you have put up a paid barricade, if you put up a paywall, if you put up a paid mechanism, it can and will be treated by some members of the internet uh, community as a barrier to be overcome. What you want also to be considering is that every barrier, every block, every stopping point in a user's experience is a form of damage and they will route past it. If you're taking too much damage, you're getting too many barriers between you and what you desire, it's raising your costs, personal costs of consumption, you'll go somewhere else. And given the internet was designed for seamless flow, it will be easier for you to go somewhere else than charge through the blockade. All right, a couple of things, uh, theoretical, conceptual, the virtual geography, give it a consideration. A lot of the language here is old language, it's history. It's also so you can avoid saying things like cyberspace, unironically, because there is no such thing of information superhighway, all those dead metaphors from the 90s, get a bit of a run, partly because I'm from the 90s and it's always nice to revisit your past, but also so I can tell you what not to say. Speaking of cyberspace, the, the classic quote, the William uh, Gibson quote, I always raise this because there's a couple of things you need to understand. Top of the list is this was written on a manual typewriter. It wasn't even an electronic typewriter. It wasn't an electric typewriter. This was a person who didn't trust electricity enough to plug his typewriter into the wall. And he conceptualized a theoretical cyberspace which guided a lot of the early um, decision-making, graphical designs, and a whole lot of the visualizations that we've come to accept as part of the internet came from a print media novel written on a typewriter. So don't get hung up on how you get your stuff together. But it's worth considering it, and it's also worth following the links so you can actually look at virtualizations and visualizations. Biggest thing to understand, though, is that as a term, it was a fiction term. It's got no more grounding in uh, fact than if we describe this as a you know, dragon or you know, quasar or something. It doesn't work like that. Terms that do have grounding, though, uh, you're going to come across the market space as a term a lot because what we're looking at here is market spaces where we drop the internet over the top of the physical world. So digital and physical sit side by side. It's mostly what our mobile phones are doing day in, day out. It should be invisible to you as a consumer. You should be very aware of it as a marketer. Because as a marketer, you're looking, how do I make the best use of this? As a consumer, you're relying on marketers making best use of it to give you some benefit. Virtual geographies, uh, a couple of things you want to be thinking about this is, this is a crossover of infrastructure and environment and it does impact, it will make a difference. So it will be one of these areas that you don't, you won't be documenting it per se, but if you're conversant with this, you, you can start thinking in terms of what are my opportunities, what are my access points, what can I do or do differently. Particularly if you start thinking in terms of how do I access a place where the market is, or how do I build a place that the market will come to? Virtual economy is basically, this is the most expendable bit of this whole thing. It's constantly under upgrade and we have no, it's not solid. It's going to be a house built on shifting sands because the internet's only 20 years old. 
Television is way older than that, and we're still coming up with new things for TV. And don't even get started on how old print media is, and we still come up with new things we can do with print. So consider it this way. It's the interaction plus the environment. How do we facilitate transactions that we want our consumers to make with us? E-business, big market to be dealt with, a lot of interesting stuff out there, not what we're doing with this course per se. This is very much consumer to consumer or consumer business to consumer, consumer to business course. E-business gives you a lot of other opportunities and a lot of interesting things you can do. If you're up for that, look into it separately, but this is the e-marketing, the e-consumer behavior side. On the subject of, three things you want to be mindful are going to be having a significant impact on you. First thing is that this is a course that will ask you to create your own marketing metrics and judge yourself against those metrics. And there is a lot of data. The internet is entirely computerized, so computers create data trails, data trails create metrics. So there's a lot of stuff that you'll be doing in terms of assessing performance, predicting performance, using data, looking at strategies based around small data. You can do big data as well if that's your thing, but I'm also keen for you to be looking at the what information is available to me that I can use to guide my behavior to recognize what went right and repeat that. All right, the last of the big models that comes up, chapter one, this is the big model, virtual product. You need to understand this product model. It is one of the most important ideas in the whole of the e-marketing book, because what you're looking at here is how you're going to take a bundle of features and turn them into a set of benefits experienced by a consumer. Now, the critical part here is that virtual product has been introduced before we've done the recap of marketing theory. And this is because at this point, what you want to do with virtual product is start thinking in terms of what do I want my consumer, my target audience to do? Do I want them to feel something, use something, store something, or absorb something? Do I want them to learn? Do I want them to do? Do I want them to feel, or do I want them to postpone? So there's a whole bunch of ways and means of thinking about this. Really important model is going to guide a lot of your thinking throughout the semester and make life easier for you when you're trying to work out what you want to do from a practical perspective in assessment, and also from a theoretical perspective. This is a great way to be able to break up and look at a service on the internet and say, well, what does it do? So there's your four pack, virtual goods, services, experience, and content. You want to think about these. You want to think, what am I going to be doing? Where do I sit inside this framework? The last element that I want to talk to you about is also a bit of a, um, a heads up. If you're not familiar, overly familiar with the internet, you don't spend a lot of time there. There are two conceptual ideas that you may have experienced but are also kind of weird things that happen from a consumer behavior perspective. Top of the list is telepresence. A sense of being somewhere or being in a place other than when you are where you are physically whilst you're engaged with an online. It's that sense that if you've been watching a movie and you come back out, that's sort of that jarring sensation of coming back to you know, the back to reality sensation. You get reading a book, watching a movie, getting engrossed in a particular task. Telepresence is the sense that you can feel that you are somewhere else or you feel that you are within an environment. Flow state is where that you lose the sense of the environment around you. The internet facilitates flow states like no other technology we've built. We have built a bucket load of technologies to do flow state. So flow state is the thing as well that when you read about it, you will increase your propensity to be susceptible to it. And flow state can work really well if you're doing research, reading, 
assignment writing, a good flow state in an assignment writing means that you will drop into the rhythm of the writing, words will flow, time will pass, and you will not be aware of the passage of time. You'll come out the other side having done stuff and gone that blinking mode of how long was that? But if you're not familiar with this, it can be a little unsettling and it can be an unusual experience. So, welcome to eMarketing, welcome to the internet. If you're not familiar with the internet as producer and as an e-marketer. This is what we're looking at here. The internet's been around long enough for people to have had it just around the place as they're growing up, for it not to be a thing that was separate from their lives. That doesn't mean, having experienced it as a consumer, that you are immediately able to operate it as a producer. What this means is that you then have a task in front of you to go and learn how do I use this in a completely different manner from a recipient of the marketing activity to a creator of the marketing activity. So if you find that to be a challenge at any point along the way, you've got the contact points, the email, the Twitter account, on the hashtag, or across the Waddle site, connect to me, talk to me, let me know how you're going, ask questions if you need to. The course is meant to be interactive, it's meant to be, uh, but that interaction has to be driven by you as the student because I know this stuff. Like, I wrote the book on it, literally. I've been doing it for 20 years. What you don't understand is something you're going to have to tell me because I will just assume that you get it like the way I do. So if there's something you don't understand, please tell me about it. It's very, very important that you provide that feedback loop to me because I can't read your minds to find out what it is you're worried about, stuck on, or don't know. So use the platform, use the connections, talk to me. And uh, welcome to the internet. It'll be fun.